and a banana. You're home from Florida. Nice, girl. Joel. I love Joel Sachs. You made it. Love these early lives. You know? Uh, hey, yeah, Sophia. I'm not uh, against this either. Rhonda Rambles here for roll call. Here for roll call. Jen, Jen, Pookie. Abigail's with us. Dirty Mouse. Jin Lee, Liz R, Third Eye Open. Thank you for being here, mods. Hey, Rain Virus. Uh, Paula Puffer, love you, girl. Uh, Paula, thank you for helping, by the way, on the um, gathering next Friday. I really appreciate that. Uh, and everybody else who's helping. Jezebel Mode, Naomi Hales, Lori Ellingson, Hippie Chick. I feel like I haven't seen you for a minute. Beverly, Miss Wallflower. Nana of 12, Kim Greenleaf made it, Stacy Sullivan, good to see you, girl. Shannon Lee, uh, thank you, Abigail. Kayfic, love you, Christy. Sorry I was so late to answer you. Meredith Lynn, Rain, I love you, you know this. Teacher Nurse, glad you're checking in with us. Pajama Pixies here. Uh, Layla Bradley, love you. Uh, Baby Steps, Annette Faber, live for now, hello. Thanks, Rain. Mark Hardman. Oh, you're so cute. We love Mark Hardman. Marsha, good to see you. Mom is live. My sister, uh, Curious George. Are there, Are you going to be changing to all early lives so you can do a related vote? Not at all. No, no, no. I'm just trying to um, switch it up a little bit. Uh, I don't know if we're doing a related vote today or not, but this is just me more on my channel because I pretty consistently was doing later lives. So I just thought, you know what, it's working for the people um, outside of the U.S. And I wanted to do that for them as much as I can. And then I'll switch to evenings again. Evenings work for me pretty well, too. But I can do either one, typically. Um, yeah, Rhonda Rambles, good to see you, girl. Uh, Paula, yes, thank you. Goosebump, hey. Interesting, I didn't know there was a protest in L.A. Mama Smurf, cute. Joe Banks, hey, Snake, it's been a minute, man. I hope you're doing good. Hold on, Katie Fulton's texting me about a kimono. Uh, they're having a sale. Jennifer Grace is having a sale today. You know, those caftans and kimonos that we like and Katie's picking stuff out. Hold on, guys. That one is really pretty, Katie. Wonder if she's in here. Uh, I don't want to get behind. Ashley Marie, Brian Lucas, Just Jojo. Good to see you. Donna Marie. Jenny gets chatty. Judy Bug. What a cute name. And exciting for you. You're waiting on an offer you put in on the house. That is an exciting time. Waiting to see if it gets, you know, it can be a bummer of a time too, though. Casey's here. Mm, your husband just deployed. I'm sorry. That's scary. That makes me sad for you. Uh, Ursina, I did this again. I was thinking about you, girl. Yarn Prepper, I hope you're not mad at me from yesterday. You said you were going to go live under a rock. Please don't do that. Leslie, girl, I love it. Sorry, guys, my boo bitches. I love it when you say, when you see us and say hi in roll call. Haven't been feeling seen lately and you make me feel wanted. Dirty Mouse, I love you. And I think about you whenever I'm in the shower using your products you sent me. So I love you. Armine, I finished the hands waiting for frame to arrive and fingers crossed you have it before you go to Phoenix. That's amazing. Armina, I love you so much, girl. I really do. Rhonda McNeil, you're another one I really love. Love, love, love. Amy Degg. Uh, thank you, Amy. I, I, Rhonda, I'm glad you said that because I kind of went through a uh, number with the frames. I was like, what frames? And these were the best. By the way, who the hell wanted to know what frame this was yesterday? This is a Cole Haan. I've never owned a Cole Haan, but it's very comfortable. The style number is CH5000 um, in Blush Tortoise. Whoever wanted to know that. I hope they know that now. Uh, thanks, Peace Lady. Yeah, you guys like these earlier. A lot of people like these earlier lives. I'm liking it too. Thanks, Kim Greenleaf. Hey, Kate D, Angie Mo. Oh, good, good. Katie, you're in here. I love you, Katie. Proud Frank, good to see you. Hockey Town John. Hey, Reese, you hot buttered biscuit. Oh, left Aaron's live as soon as I got the notification priorities. I love Hockey Town John. You are so sweet. I love you, Hockey Town John. Thank you for, I didn't even know Aaron was live. 
whoops, sorry guys. Uh, Big Z, there are only 147 people in here. So somebody must be important that's live because I got to be honest, those are rookie numbers. Those are rookie numbers. We usually pump those numbers up. Stella. Hey, Positive Life. Uh, you doing? Just finished watching. Say is, it was educational. Stella, it uh, was. Uh, it was very educational. Guys, I enjoyed that live. I talked with Tommy a couple of times so far today. I think we should continue to have those chats. Not all the time. Of course, that's not going to be what, what we talk about all the time. We won't talk about anything all the time. But I really liked it. I, I think, you know what? I got a lot of good feedback. There might have been one or two people that were like, not for me. I, I got a lot of good feedback on that live. I think it's important to talk about that stuff. It's educational. Lumen, love you, girl. Eden Grace. Liesl? Uh, usually on replay and lurker. Love you guys. Thinking of all of you as friends. Well, you are a friend. Reese, a pure joy on your face during the first call and show was so great. You are so inspirational. I love you. Thank you for saying that. I'm glad you made it. That's amazing. Thanks for being a part of the replay crew. Kind of like Jazzy Girl. I love that you're here, Jazzy Girl. Thank you, Lumen. Hey, Abita. Jam, jam. Just left my fifth graders play. Oh, how cute. That's adorable, jam, jam. Taming of the Shrewy did so good. I remember those when Huxley would do stuff like that. They don't do that in eighth grade. Sandy Kovacs, you like the earlier lives. I like that. Love you, Jazzy Girl Sarah. Uh, loves Alaska. I haven't seen you for a minute either. It's nice to see you. Joanne Ventrilla's here. Jemiah's here. Yeah, YouTube got weird last night. I don't know. Uh, Susan Weimer's here. Proud Frank, I totally wish you were with the SPTV meetup in Clearwater. Love following all the adventures. Wish you were there. You know, I wasn't invited to that, man. I didn't even know about it. Uh, a few people from the chat told me about it, but I. it sounds like everybody's there. I uh, wasn't informed in the, in the least, but that's okay. I looks like they're having a good time. Sounds like it. Maybe I wasn't invited because I had already gone in the past, but I would have liked to have met those girls. I love Kelly Copter. I'd love to meet Natalie. Um, Liz Gale. I do love Liz Gale. I know her, but I've never met her and it would have been cool. Next time. J9. Yes, Rhonda, you made it for roll call, girl. Striped Hat Lady. What a cute name. Kathy Ann, love you. Silent Grief Talks. Hey, Ashley M Marie says, uh, the earlier lives less chaotic at my house. Yeah, I could see that. P. Taylor. Thank you. I love you, Katie Fulton. Amy says, uh, the early lives are great because I'm actually on the computer. Later lives I catch on my TV. Oh, and you can't chat. Okay, that is good. Uh, Decoding Colts. Yeah, it's been a minute since I've seen you. Good to see you. Thank you, Tammy Smith. I love you guys. I just love going down this list. It's so uplifting reading and saying hi to everybody and just... And it's so cool because when I talk to you guys, I feel like we haven't talked in forever, but we talk every day. That's even better. It's like, I actually get excited when I see every name on here. Uh, <laughs> Witchy Trista, that was so weird. Hey, there's Mare. I love Mare. Uh, Ev, didn't you just get some uh, lip stains? Is that is that what I read? Ev, I might have gotten this color that you just bought. Uh, I got number 68. I got, I think you said you got Rosewood. I bought Rosewood. I don't know if that's what this is because it doesn't show the name on here. It just shows the number. So I don't know what uh, color this is, but I'm liking it. I'm liking it. So I'm glad you got some, Ev. I know, Leslie girl. It was so weird. It really glitched. I have lost so many subscribers on this channel. It's insane. Like just now the number dropped again. Maybe YouTube is still doing this or people are starting to hate me. I don't know which. Uh, but I hope that there's a few of you that stick around. Deeming. Oh, Spanx just did an interview with Christy. That's awesome. I love Spanx. I like your non-avoidance of the realities of life. What does that mean? Well, I think I understand what that means, Sophia. I appreciate that. Jay Bernie. Okay, well, Jay, I, I don't want everybody to get too used to it. I'm going to switch it up, guys. I'm just trying to do a little bit of both so that Arsena can make it and all of our other friends. <laughs> Teacher nurse, that's hilarious. Oh, I love you. Be glad you didn't go. 
to Clearwater, Tampa B. I heard, I heard a few things from you that I should be glad I didn't go. I don't know. I did. I wasn't there. Um, I don't always add to the uh, fun. So I might've been a bit of a downer. Phoenix rising. Wow. Catching alive. It's just what I needed. Yeah, I get that. Yo, oh, you've been crying all day. Okay. Well, that's horrific. I'm sorry to hear that. We don't want you crying, babe. So we're going to try to lift you up. It's kind of a sad day for me too, but <laughs> trying not to be. Oh, Cindy Collins. Okay. You're subscribed again. I can't tell you how many people are unsubscribed. Martha. Love that. Glad you made it. Nothing wrong with a little early bird action, Kathy Ann. I get what you're saying. Yeah, Abigail, you're on the... Oh, vintage Rosewood. Okay, okay. I don't know what this is. I just know the numbers. I'm not sure. Like I said, it's number 68, but it's, it's a simple soft pink and I like it. Sweet koala. Thank you, babe. I washed my hair finally, you guys. Diana H., we are so happy for you that you found a place and you're moving. I'm really, really happy for you. I think I'm starting to experience spring allergies. My head feels kind of light, and uh, I feel like my voice is weird, and I'm kind of itchy. Oh, yeah, I'm sure it's a YouTube thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yarn prepper, the stains have numbers on them. It's a glitch. No, I know, but... My subscribers really, truly, Jazzy Girl, are dropping like flies. You guys are being unsubscribed. Like, I've never seen it before. Hey, uh, Reese, I got to chat with my sis today. I'm so happy you got to spend time together. I did. I went to dinner with your sister last night, and I had a heck of a good time. It was really fun. She is really a, she's a, she's a fun time gal. She's just like you, fun time gals. Love you, Crystal. That's really kind. Somebody who is choosing to remain anonymous paid for Kelly Copter's plane ticket. Wow. That is so kind. I love that, Lisa. People have done really nice things for me, too. People are amazing. Hey, Malvakai. I don't know. You know, somebody told me uh, like a week ago that pink is my color. I don't wear a lot of pink. It makes me feel like I get a little washed out in pink. But, you know, I also, you guys have told me over and over, red is my color. So maybe, maybe pinks and reds. Okay, yarn prepper. Um, uh, just think of all the lost manpower hours from all those who of us who work from home. Blame it on that darn Reese. Put it on me. Put it on my tab. Oh my God, Ashley Marie, that's hilarious. Hey, original Alexa. Ursina, I, that's sweet of you to ask. No, today is not the death date anniversary of Fred. Today is the death date anniversary that my dog died out of nowhere. And then three days later, Fred died, my husband. So five years ago this morning on a Wednesday, which is weird, my dog uh, died on my chest and it was horrible because I never felt like I got, got to process the loss because Fred died three days later. So I, I had that dog for 12 years. I got him when he was eight weeks old. And uh, I never felt like I did that very good of justice. And I feel like he was upset with me about that. I could be wrong, but we were very close, very spiritually close, that dog and I. And I feel like he, I did a bit of a disservice to him. It's not Fred's fault, but just that I didn't really get to process it. I didn't get to be with him during the loss like that, like for very long, because I, Two days later, I had to call hospice to get Fred there because he just decided, you know, he's given up too. So, and I don't mean that disrespectfully. I mean, his body was giving out and I had no idea they were going to happen within three days of each other. I didn't even know my dog was going to die. Um, Audrey, I'm glad you're here and I'm sorry. Um, but uh, thank you, Joel. It was tough. Um, it was really tough. And I'll tell you something that I don't think about very often, but I probably should just get it out. Um, thank you, Jazzy girl. What? Is Tommy in here? Oh, is he? Where? How? Why don't I see it? How come I never see anything? Why do you guys see stuff and I don't get to? What's hiding from me? Somebody tell me. How come I can't see it? Tommy, blink twice. Oh, there he is. 
Well, look at that. I like that you showed up as the relate boat. Tommy, do we need to capitalize the B? Because my mods talk about it and they capitalize the B in boat. I don't know, but you sure are cute, aren't you? Yeah, so... Okay, decoding colts. Yeah, have a, I'm glad you popped in though, my friend. It was good to see you. <laughs> cute, Tommy. Um, so... I just got to get this out because it was so, what was the dog's name? Gary, Gary, um, Huxley watched SpongeBob and he liked, um, he, we, the SpongeBob snail, his name was Gary. And we would say it in that voice and we would go, Gary, Gary. And he was so cute. And, uh, okay. Goosebump. Enjoy that. Have a good time. Holly, you've been wearing lip color. I've been watching since you were outed and look forward to see you every day. Holly, that is such a nice thing to say. Thank you for saying that, my friend. And I love that you're wearing lip colors. I'm telling you, it'll pop your whole damn face. It'll brighten things. You'll get a date. You'll get laid. Um, all kinds of things happen when you put on lipstick. Yeah, I'm keeping him alive in my heart. Of course I am. I just feel like I did a bit of a disservice there. I can't quite, uh, rain virus, of course you do. I can't quite uh, articulate what I mean by that. I had him cremated. No, you're not weird. I mean, I had him, hey, Linda Perales. I had him cremated. He's in a box with his name on it. I don't know. I am glad I did it, I guess. But here's what happened. So I was the sales and marketing director uh, for a corporate company uh, in a senior living community at the time, five years ago. Yeah, you just need lipstick, really, Mare, is all you need if you're trying to get down, which I try to do pretty often. And I, it was, uh, you know, Huxley to get up for school. Uh, Fred and I were married, and Fred was a sleep-in kind of dude. Fred was a late-ass night owl, and I'm not. I'm not at all. Fred would stay up till, like, 3 in the morning watching crap at night. So I would go to bed, and uh, so he slept in. I don't know. Do I have an olive undertone? Probably because I'm Italian. My mom has olive skin. And I, uh, no, I wasn't ready, Martha. I had no idea he was dying. Now, here's the thing. I will say this. Gary was had congestive heart failure, but he had been on, uh, regulated with it on medication for three years. So, I mean, it was nothing new. He was on his furosemide and uh, something else. We took, took two medications every day. Um, and uh, about six o'clock in the morning, I woke, he was a chihuahua, you guys. He was the cutest damn chihuahua. Most of them have a black nose and he had a pink nose and he was really friendly, which my vet said chihuahuas usually aren't. He was a very sweet dog. Um, speaking, speaking of, well, don't come over here meowing at me if you're not gonna act right and come up here. Look at that tummy, girl. Dang, girl. I think you've gained some. Oh yeah, that's a lot, that's heavy. Hey, Sandy Wandy. Um, so my sister at the time had four or five dogs. I think she had five. And her and her husband uh, were huge dog people. I'm not real close to my sister. I don't call her all the time. We don't talk on the phone all the time. But for whatever reason. So I wake up and Gary is four pounds. He's a little guy. Him's a little guy. He's so cute. And he was on my chest and somebody told me once, you'll know when they start dying. Um, congestive heart failure dogs, because it sounds like a washing machine. Um, and his heart already was, hey, Don Gloves, working kind of overtime. He was getting up there, I could tell, but like, I just still didn't think it was coming. And uh, oh man, it was so loud. And he was, and he was on my chest. And it was six in the morning and I thought, um, Marisa, good to see you, girl. I thought, what do I do? Is he dying? I didn't know if he was dying at the, at the time, but I thought maybe he was dying, but I kind of was in denial and I thought, we'll wait it out until the vet opens at eight. Uh, Mayor, I will look for a picture of him. Yeah, I, I can share one while I'm here, but let me finish saying this real quick. Um, so I'm like kind of going back and forth in my mind. Do I go to an emergency vet now uh, or do I wait? You know, he just was struggling. He was struggling. 
and I'm holding him. And I was like, so, and I, and I remember being like kind of still out of it. I was waking up and I remember going, go back to sleep, Gary, go back to sleep. Like I feel bad now when I go back over this in my mind because I kind of downplayed it and I wish I hadn't. So I call my sister at like six 30 in the morning and, uh, hi, Don. Thank you, Don. And, um, I stepped outside of my house because Fred was sleeping and Huxley was still sleeping and I didn't want to wake anybody up. So I left Gary on the bed and I step outside. I remember going all the way up my driveway and I call my sister and her husband, who I love is in the background on the phone. And, um, I said, I think my dog is dying. And she was like, what? And I said, I need help. I don't know what to do. You guys have five dogs. I don't know. Is he dying? And I described all of her symptoms and she, and they were like, no, I don't think he's dying. It, it sounds like he's maybe having like an episode. And I said, but I, he's never done this before. Like something's not right. I don't know what to do. Well, I spent way too much fun, to, time on the phone out there. I spent way too much time. That was time that I'll never get back that I wish I would have had with him. See, I'm starting to feel sad. I never cried about this much because it trumped Fred. So I didn't really get a chance to grieve him, to mourn that. And I had him again for 12 years. I was very close to that dog, guys. Very, very, I mean, I'm close to all my animals. It's not a shock to say that, right? But so I'm outside. I was on the phone with her for like 20 minutes. Well, I had I got, could go back now. No, that was precious time. I was losing with him. And he, uh, it was so rough. It was so, it was such a spiritual thing that tells me everything I need to know about animals, that they are beings, they are real creatures. I don't care. You don't have to agree with me on that, but like there's more than just there's something there. There's a connection. There's a hard connection. He needed me. I wasn't there. Right. So I get off or no, I don't get off the phone. I stay on the phone with my sister and I have her on speaker and I'm like, be quiet. Cause Huxley's asleep. I'm going to go back in and check on Gary. And I go in and this time he's laying down. He couldn't stand anymore. And I said, oh my God, he's dying. I said, he's dying. He's dying. He's definitely dying. And Brianna goes, oh my God. And Chris, my brother-in-law in the background went, Brianna, be quiet. He said, just be quiet and let her be with the dog. And I'm talking three breaths. That was it. I'll never forget this. I put my hands on him and I got really close and he went, <gasps> and he died. He waited for me to die for him to die, for me to come in. He waited on me. He did not want to die and me to come in and him be dead. And I thought that was so sad. I felt so bad that I spent that 20 minutes out there on the fucking phone when I could have been with him. And I felt so bad. I just didn't know it was happening that soon. And it broke me. I was so heartbroken. I was like, I just apologized to him over and over. I said, I'm so sorry that I just wasted this time not being with you. You know, anything, anything that's dying, I believe you should, you should be with them. Um, because three days later, my husband died and I spent 12 hours waiting for him to die that day as he wound down, his heart was winding down. We were getting down to the last breath and I would never trade that be for anything because I am glad that I got to be there. I never left his side, you know, uh, it's, it's a very spiritual, very emotional experience. And, uh, he, well, he gave me that gift, Katie, he waited, but it's absolutely a test to me of strength. He waited for me. That wasn't just coincidental timing, right? Like that wasn't just, I watched him take three breaths. That was it. He was gone, but he waited for me to be there. It's like, he didn't want to, to die without me there. And, oh God, I felt terrible about it. I just, I felt so bad. So I call my boss, who was an awful woman, terrible woman. Uh, and I said, my dog of 12 years just died. And uh, thank you, Tommy. And uh, I said, 
I can't come to work. I can't come to work. My dog just died. And she goes, well, I'm going to need you here. And I said, uh, okay, like, what do you mean? And she goes, well, I can't have you take a day off. I'm going to need you here. She was like, I need you, you know, we've got things scheduled and then I need you here. And I said, all right. So I, um, went to work. I went and dropped his body off and to be cremated. And I went to work. Here he is with Fred. Look how cute he was. Yeah, he was really cute. Uh, Gertie, I had at the time, was with him. That's He had just died. She looks really sad. That was his body laying there. He had just died. Well, let's see. Look at that. April 17th, 2019. That was at 9.36 a.m., Three year, or five years ago. Um, but he was a really cool dog and uh, Huxley loved him. Gertie loved him. He was just a cool guy. He was a really cool, uh, high maintenance, definitely high maintenance. I always made fun of uh, and would say Gary refused to learn English because he was Hispanic. He was a full-blown Chihuahua. And if he felt like lifting his leg and taking a piss in my house, he was going to do it because he would cuss me out in Spanish and say, F you, I don't have to, I'll, I do what I want. Uh, Gertie was the opposite of that. Gertie was very, uh, Gertie is very trained, very smart. She's willing to, uh, she's a pleaser. Gary, not so much. Gary was like, you can go F yourself. Not this baby. This baby is smart and she listens. I'm going to look for a different picture, Katie. But, uh, okay, you want back down? All right. Were you just coming because I said your name? Um, I'm not looking at the chat for a minute. No, it was 2019. That was 2019, guys. It was five years. Five years ago. Now you're freaking me out. It was 2019. Sounds like Jeff is yelling at somebody, but he doesn't yell much. So that would be weird. Maybe he's just projecting. Okay. Yeah. April 17th, 2019. All right. Freaked me out. You freaked me out. Thought I was losing it. No, I want to find this picture of me and Gare. Gary, me and Gare Bear. God dang, Jeff. He's like on the other side of the house and I hear him. God, he was a dainty little thing, you guys. He was he looks big here, but I just got up close to him. Look at how cute. Isn't he cute? Yelling at Sister Christian? No, he's not yelling at anybody. I can hear him. He's going 01472. He's just being really loud. He doesn't yell much at people that he doesn't know that well. Look at Fred and Gare. Look at Fred and Gare. Bye, Tommy. Love you. Gary and Fred really loved each other. Aren't they cute? Oh, my God. They're cute. Damn it. And they died both uh, three days apart. They left me. And I'll tell you, that was one of the toughest things I've done. This was at the farm right after they both died. This was May 13th, 2009, 19. I keep saying that. My sister snapped this. My parents flew me to the farm after they both died. And that's me and Huxley. And I was crying, looking out at the farm. And I was just reeling, guys. I was having such a hard time. I was having such a hard time after both of those losses. It was Mother's Day, and they both, my parents flew me. Look at this one. Look at that little gent. Look at him. Isn't he cute? He's the mo most perfect little Hispanic chihuahua. Yeah, Huxley was really cute. 
<laughs> Look at Hux and Gertie here. Huxley was really little. Look at Gertie's face. She's like, um, I don't think children should be picking up dogs. Look at that. Look how uncomfortable she looks. She's like, get it off, get it off, get it away from me. Yeah, Ursina, it was really hard losing them at the same time. Oh my holy gentle Jesus. Look at him. Look at Gary. Look at him. Photogenic much? Hello, little prince. Little prince, tiny prince. Hey, Aaron Burnett. God, he was cute. He was so cute. Yeah. That was the two of us laying there with our eyes closed. My hair was really dark. Hux was really little. Oh, the pink nose. It's rare. I never see a pink nose on them. Oh, look at these two. Look at these two. You guys want to see something really cute? Holy. Best friends, living life, acting right, looking really cute. Oh my God. Look at Gertrude. Look at that. Look at that. Look at it. Don't stop looking. You're not done yet. Keep looking. Keep looking. Is that the cutest thing you've ever seen? Yeah, it was a lot within 72 hours apart, especially because I didn't know either one of them were planning to die. Look at these two. That's when I first got Gertie. Look at those two. They were so cute. Weren't they cute? I miss Gary. I didn't get to, uh, I didn't really get to say goodbye and I feel terrible about it. To this day. I don't feel good about it. I don't feel right in my heart about it. I feel a little better talking to you guys about it though. Oh my holy Christ. Look at this, look at this. He hated clothing. Kala, he hated clothing. So does Gertie, both of them go under the bed. Uh, thank you, hockey guy. Hockey guy, where the hell have you been, damn it? Not to... Okay, you've been gone for too long. It's been too long, okay? it's You can't be doing that. You guys, Gary hated wearing clothes. And one time I bought him a sweater and they would hide under the bed when I put clothes on him. It's torture. They don't like it. But look at this. Look at it. Look at it. Oh, oh keep looking. Keep looking. Stop it. Don't look away. Don't even blink. Stop blinking. Look at his pink nose. Oh, God, I miss him. Oh, thanks, Heather Carr. Thanks, Rhonda. Lisa F., you're a new member. I love that girl. Thank you. God, so cute. He was a cute little turkey. Little guy. Just him's just a little guy. He was a little tiny, and uh, I really miss him. So today is the uh, death date with Gare. Oh my, all that is holy, sweet, holy, look at him. Was he just a little gent? I mean, what kind of a person? I've never seen something. So, I mean, we have ne born next to the Lord there, but I think he was born next to him too. I'm not sure. I mean, I know that he only spoke Spanish. So there was a bit of a language barrier, but you know what? We didn't let that get in the way of each other's love for one another. Uh, Crystal, thank you for throwing those out like hot sauce packets, girl. Oh, Big Z, please do. Oh, I know. He's so little, Lisa F. You guys have no idea. You think Gert is small? He had mouse feet. I told him that all the time. I was like, I know you don't speak English, but you have little mouse feet, my little Pero friend. Isn't Pero? I know I'm not saying it. I'm saying it like how you would say Dolce and Gabbana instead of Gabbana, but isn't Pero Hispanic dog? Yeah. How old was Gary? He was 12. And you know, the littler, the smaller the dog, I know Tampa B, the smaller the dog, uh, usually the longer the life. So 12 was not very old for a chihuahua that size, but he had, he was diagnosed at the age of nine with congestive heart failure. And uh, we treated it with medication. And then, uh, all right, all right, hockey, hockey guy. I remember the last, oh, Pedro. Pedro? Is it Pedro? 
The last incident, man, you got smacked with a, a breakfast sandwich at McDonald's. You need to quit stepping into those traps. Stay away from the ladies, man. Um, yeah. Oh, yours is 14 today. Yeah, chihuahuas typically live a long time. My brother-in-law, who I called that day, he had a chihuahua named Guinness that was a little smaller than Gary. He lived to be 20 years old. Sweet Jesus. I wouldn't want him to live that long. That's a little long, honestly, for me. But um, Gary, Gary had a shorter life, and that makes me fairly sad. Um, I got to show you guys some things real quick. Got to show you a few things. Got to show you something. Got to show you something. You know, our man Huxley, who we tend to like, and you know how cute he is. Guys, I'm about to show you something. Look at Huxley's kindergarten picture. It just popped up. Perfection. Look at my child. Look at my child's kindergarten picture. I can't get over it. Look at the hands in the pockets. Five years old. Look at the hands in the pockets. Oh my God. Look at how cute. Is that the cutest thing you might have ever seen? Look at him. He's so cute. Oh, it goes by too fast. Oh, God. I know. Yeah, 20 years old. Isn't he cute? Huxley is so cute. <laughs> Five, look at him. Look at his little outfit. Oh, my God. He was so cute. I know, Rain. Have another child. I do have cute kids. I know. He's so cute. <laughs> Damn it. This is an emotional week. Uh, Huxley, where'd you go? Uh, one more of Gary. One more for the final for Gary. Look at this nonsense. Look at the nonsense. Look at that. Is that the... That looks like a cartoon. It doesn't even look real. Look at those eyes. Oh, my God. Gary. That's how we would say his name because of SpongeBob. Gary. I know. Guys, Huxley was so cute. Holy prepster. Holy country club. Wow. Breaking it out. Look at that. Look at his little boat shoes. Oh, my God. This is nonsense. I haven't looked at these in a long time. Is that the cute? I wish Tommy was still here. Is that the cutest thing you've ever seen? Oh, my God. Look at his little stuffed animal in his hand. Oh, so cute. I think he was at a funeral. That's why I had him dressed up. <laughs> I don't know how to dress a child for a funeral. Who knows? I don't know the protocol. I don't know. Oh, one more, one more, because I sent this one to my mom last week. He, when we would go to Whole Foods, he would get his own little shopping cart. Oh my God. Look at it. Uh, I know this is annoying. People show pictures of, of their kids and you're like, okay, yeah, yeah, no, he's cute. But we're doing this because you guys know Huxley. This is different. Oh my God. It is like my golf look. Holy country club. Not there though. Right there. He's a bit hipster. He's a little bit like a, uh, you know, he looks like he's on his, uh, his first marriage. He looks like he's newly married and he doesn't know how to dress yet. And she's going to fix that right up. That's how he looks. He looks like he just came out of bachelor stage. Um, I know. How cute. How cute. You guys want to see one more? You guys want to know what Huxley's hair looked like before I ever cut his hair? His dad has curly hair. You want to see this shit? This is for real. Katie, don't do it. Kids are overrated, girl. You could get a terrible one and then, you know, your life is ruined. But if you do do it, make sure you have a C-section because you are hot and I want to make sure that your vagina has a good future. Uh, look at this. Look at this. So his dad had uh, curly hair. Oh, yeah. He didn't have curls. It was more of like a fro type, like just... Phew. Am I getting baby fever? No. No, no. My, my time is... Uh, those days are over. Uh, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. I had to cut his hair because people would go, how old is she? Look at this. You're not going to believe it. You're going to go, no way. You're not going to believe it. Watch. Watch and learn. Watch and learn. <laughs> look at 
Look at my kid's hair. It looks like that every day. Thank you, Charlotte. Tampa B, are you seeing this? It looked like that every day. I didn't do anything to it. That's Huxley's hair until I got his haircut. What is going on? <laughs> What's happening? Why? It was the cutest thing, but that was my kid's hair for the first couple of years. Yeah. Chaotic bleach. I did an early one for you. Is that the cutest thing you might have ever seen? What's happening? What's 80s? Holy 80s. Look at my gross fingernail. Guys, and I said this before, I'm weird about fingernails looking dirty. I used my purple shampoo today and it stains the underneath of my nails. So please just be aware of that. It's not, uh, I wasn't working on a carburetor or anything like that. I know. Isn't he cute? I know, Katie, it's too much. It was so much hair. When I first took him to get a haircut, the guy was like, damn kid. He said, you got more hair than a cocker spaniel. All right, hockey guy. We're going to give you a pass because we love you. Uh, yeah, it's so cute, Rhonda McNeil. It's so cute. That's okay, Chaotic Bleach, but I did it for you, girl. You and Arsena. It's Golden Girl's hair. Uh, yeah, he does. Somebody said he looked like Robert Plant. Yeah, Robert Plant hair. Isn't that crazy? That's insane. God, it was cute. I loved his hair. Sweet Jesus. Holy country club again. What's going on? Oh, these were for Christmas pictures. As I say, I didn't dress my kid like this all the time. I do want to point out, though, for people who want to judge me on how I dressed him, every piece of clothing you see on Huxley, I bought it at a thrift store. All of this was from thrift stores. Check that out. All right. He looks like Macaulay Culkin. Home Alone style. Look how cute. That was for going to see Santa. Look at his little tiny boat shoes. Oh, my God. Is that so cute? I love the hands in the pockets. I don't know where that came from, but I love when men do that in general. I think it's just kind of a cute look. Yeah, the hands in the pockets. Uh, hey, Island Life, glad you made it. Was his massive hair soft or wiry? It was soft. Yeah, he does, Robin. He looks just like that today. Oh my God. Look at what a cute sweater. I got that at the thrift store. Look at how cute. Look at how cute. Is that so cute? This is even cuter because you guys know Huxley. It's so cute. Damn it. Damn it, he's cute. How adorable. That hair, though. You guys want to see a picture of me and my dad? Because that's rare as shit. Here's me and Gene Wally. And I just want to point out what a good father. Like, what a good dad here, guys. He's got a cigarette hanging out of his mouth, me on one arm, and a fish on the other. And I will say, my dad and I fished a lot. I will say, I did want this t-shirt, and I wish I could find it in a thrift store. It says, Nooners, in and out in minutes, Omaha, Nebraska. There's Gene. There's me and Gene and a fish. Clearly the man wanted to be a parent. Although I shouldn't judge too harshly here. This was most parents probably in the 80s. But uh, there he is. There he is. I like the cig hanging out though. How are you going to smoke that thing when you got a fish in one hand and a toddler on the other? How are you going to, what are you doing there? That's Gene. Look at his sexy legs. All right. Look how tan he was. My Holy crap. His legs were like a totally different color than his face, though. I'm a little concerned. Um, what? Uh, Emily, I do too. What are you going to do when the girls line up the front door? For what? Girls line up for what? <laughs> it's the worst. Oh, Donna Marie, I'm sorry you miss your dad. I don't miss my dad. Um, but I do miss fishing. That was a good time. Nooners. I'm assuming, I'm assuming it's a bar, but that's a hilarious t-shirt. Uh, yeah, that's just funny. The cigarette. I just, sometimes I'm like, I want to say that out. Cause I used to smoke. Yeah. And I wanted to be like, I only got two hands and one of them's holding the cigarette. That's Gene. That's him guys. That's, uh, that's that piece of shit that, uh, really did a number. 
My dad was not born into Scientology. Not a dumb question at all, Shannon. Uh, my dad uh, joined in like 1970. He's been in for a long time. He was like in his 20s. I mean, my dad. That's funny. Uh, can I still fish? I'm sure I can. It's like riding a bike. I enjoyed fishing. Now I don't touch the fish though. If I catch one, I need somebody to be there to take that crap off the line. I don't, I don't feel good about it. I've never touched one. Reese, you look like you were going to have long legs. I, what happened? My dad is like six foot three. My dad is very tall and he's all, no, he's not all legs. He's got a long body. Like I do. My sister is all legs. Okay. And my sister's like five, seven. What happened here? I'm telling you, it's because my mom smoked with me. I tell her that all the time. I say, mom, my legs are underdeveloped. I look like a corgi. And she always says, you just be glad you have legs. Typical Italian mother. Yeah, that's my dad. That's him. You want to know how girly I was? We've seen this before, but let's see it again. You guys want to know? Because I'm still girly and I've always been girly. That's right. I got a pink dress with a matching headband and a necklace and a little dolly friend. And uh, I'm not ashamed because I'm exactly this way still. There I am. You knew it. You knew it well. Same thing. Same thing going on, guys. I probably would wear that dress today if it still fit. Definitely with the headband. I think I, I, think I put it together nicely. Um, I don't see much of a difference, honestly. Um, clearly I put that outfit together. My mother did not. My mom doesn't have any fashion sense. Um, so, you know, this was me, you know, this was all me, you know, even though I'm like four here, I might even be three. I went to my closet. I went to my closet and I said, what goes with my doll today? And I put the, the pink headband. Okay. Um, I put the necklace, see that pop of pink in the necklace. Do you see the white with it? You see the white? Um, I think it was summer. I was trying to incorporate a pop of white. Um, and uh, that was me. That was me. Pretty silly. I don't have a lot of pictures of me when I was a child because my father burned them to the ground. But I do have a few. I do have a few. Yeah, I do. Huxley does. <laughs> Katie, Huxley does um, definitely look like me. Yeah. So if you look at my picture, again, Katie, how do you feel? Yeah. Uh, you didn't do the matching doll to your outfit thing. Well, I mean, I think that I wanted her to be separate from me. She noticed she had a pop of red, if you will. Um, but I matched my headband, Gretchen. I matched the necklace. Look at my face. Yeah, I'm going to try to pull up a picture of Huxley. Yeah, I was all about fashion even then. I didn't give a shit about anything else. I was like, as long as my necklace and my headband and everything's tied together, uh, we're good. We're good. Huxley had just gotten out of the bath here. And I think our faces are similar, for sure. He's angelic. That kid had an angelic face. But yeah, similar. Similar. Uh, oh, was that a punky Brewster? Okay. What shoes did I wear? Gretchen, I probably had my jellies on. Um, if I had to guess, probably my jellies. I'm trying to see. I thought I had one more picture of when I was a child, but again, I don't have very many. Yeah. Oh, hey, look, I have a picture of Dan O'Connor. Just in case he wants to say that we didn't really know each other. There he is on my phone. Get the f out of here. Uh, yeah, got plenty of pictures of that, too. Yeah, I don't have very many pictures of me as a child. Anyway, I'm glad we went down memory lane there. Uh, it was a punky Brewster, apparently. Yeah. That was a good look and I'm bringing it back. Of course, Joe Virus. 
Yeah, you guys got to see uh, my father, which is, um, if you want to uh, send any wishes his way, please do so now that you have a face to put with the name. Um, yeah, real douche, real douche for sure. So there's that. And uh, I didn't really intend to talk all about Gary and all of that. I just getting that out. So then three days from now, I know, which sucks, Aaron Cooper, because Dan Connor from Roseanne was a cool dude. I love John Goodman. Uh, Charlotte, I'm not, no, it's totally okay to ask. I'm not entirely sure yet, Charlotte. Um, yeah, Layla, I don't have a bunch of pictures of me as a child, but I'm glad I have that one because that was a cute picture. Hey, Gene Wally, wishing you all the worst. Hey, Gene Wally, hoping the forces of evil make their way to your front door, dude. Yeah, you're awful. You were really mean to your children, and you're probably still really mean to everybody. Gene, you suck, man. Yeah. You're not going to come back from it either. I mean, there's no redeeming yourself at this point. Uh, Robin, yeah, loved seeing Gary. So as we head into the rest of the week, I may feel a little sad, just so you guys know. Yeah, Gene, you suck, man. Awful. Awful person. Um, we are heading into Saturday. The reason this year is harder for me with Fred is because this is matching exactly, um, the days that it was five years ago. So it happened on a Wednesday with Gary and then Saturday he died at nine o'clock. And, uh, so that just makes it a little bit harder for me. Um, yeah, noble savage, the relatable, it's good. Oh yeah. The photo, you know. The photo of your father before he looked like an old lady. That's true. Now he looks like an old woman. He didn't so much there, Anna. Good point. Good point that out. Um, so then as we go into Saturday, I might feel a little sad about, and, and guys, don't tune in if you're not wanting to hear about it. Um, thank you, Kiwi girl. Uh, and I don't mean that in a rude way. I just mean, I may talk about it a little bit on Saturday. Um, just go through the motions of losing Fred just because it'll be hard for me. And, um, I hope that doesn't bother anybody, but it's just, you know, I do better when I talk things out and uh, that's what I'll probably be doing as we get closer. Um, and I wanted to, I named this video focusing on the experiences because there's been a little bit of a shift in me lately about something. And I wondered your opinion on this. Oh, Armina, I didn't know that. Yeah, Layla, and you know, I, I the people who support me and who are real friends in here, how we're all friends, will be here for it. And and the people who are kind of fair weather and are like, whatever, I don't really like her that much anyway, won't be here. And you know what? I love those people too. It doesn't matter. Not every show that I do, even people like Tampa B, you know, I'm sure there's times where she's like, yeah, I don't really want to hear about this and tunes out. I don't expect you guys to be that loyal. Not every single time I talk about something is it going to be for you. I get that. Um, thank you, Ursina. But most of you are here for it. Like I'm here for you and I love you guys. And thank you, Joel, like Joel Sachs. Most of you will be here. And I appreciate that because I need you guys. I really do. Um, but I titled this video. Ooh, Lori. I know Tampa B. I shouldn't have used you as an example, honestly, because I can't think of a time and neither can you. Lori Hart. Um, yesterday was the anniversary of my son's passing. I feel for you. I am terribly sorry. I can't imagine what that's like. Um, I don't want to imagine what that's like. I will start crying and I'm sorry that you lost your son, girl. I'm really sorry. Please know that it's horrible. It makes me very sad for you as a mother. I'm sorry. Uh, Shannon C. Thank you. Yes. Don gloves. That's what I mean. There's, there's our, our, tight knit community that we have here. That's here for all of it. The ups, the downs, the crying, the laughing, the cooter talk, all of it. And I love, love, love that we have built that. Um, thank you, Diana H. Yeah. Donna Marie. Yeah. Katie Fulton. Like there are people, there are actually hundreds of you that I can look at your name and go, Oh yeah, I know that person. I know they'd be here for me. Like I didn't know question. They're a friend. They, they're through, they come through it all, you know, the good, the bad. And um, so thank you for that. I want you guys to know that K Fick, you're one of them for sure that I feel you, I hear you and I love you guys. Um, 
Thank you, Abigail. That's what I love about you, Reese. You're so understanding. That's why I didn't watch the Relate About stream yesterday, knowing the topic. Won't deter me completely from watching you. Abigail, exactly. That's right. That topic is not going to be for everybody. Tanya, I love you too. I love you. Um, Joe, Friday is the anniversary of my friend Mike's murder. This week is always hard for me. Oh my God, Joe, I'm so sorry. And and I hate to say this. I don't mean it in a insensitive way, but I'm kind of glad that we're sharing a hard week together. Joe, I mean, I'm sorry you lost Mike. It's really horrible. And the fact that he was murdered is hard to get past, honestly, for me. But um, just know that I'm thinking about you. And I'm glad that there's somebody out there that goes through this with me. I'm sorry. Uh, love you, Liz Tricks. It is unimaginable, baby steps. Layla is a ride or die friend, not a fair weather friend. Layla, I know that about you. And you would feel that way about Tommy too. And I love that. And same with you, Christy. Yes. Uh, Reese, I'm shocked you remember little things about me already. Yarn Prepper, you've been around forever. I have a good memory. I know you guys. This isn't a song and dance show. I'm not trying to come out here and make money and entertain you guys and be stupid. I, I connect with you. I know you guys privately. I know you personally. I remember details about you for sure. Not every detail. <laughs> hockey guy. Look at us uh, guilting and shaming hockey guy. I feel bad for departing now. You know what? I'm just happy you're back, man. It's okay. I was, I was making a bit of a joke earlier, but I'm glad you're back. And I love you, hockey guy. You mean the world to me. Seriously, you're a big part of this. Wow. Alex. Joe, my former fiance was murdered. I know how hard it is to live with that kind of trauma. You're not alone. Joe, wow. I mean, Alex, wow. But Joe, wow. That's huge. I, I, Guys, I can't process that. I don't think I know anybody that was murdered. And I'm really sorry, Chaotic Bleach. I'm so sorry. Lisa Beam, it's okay. I'm glad you made it. Yeah, Kathy Bailey, I'm so glad for supportive people that can share things good and bad on this chat. Me too. That's what I mean. Uh, Cindy Collins, I love you. Thank you for saying that. Hey, Sharon Spaghetti. Um, guys, that's why I love this group. I love this channel. That's why I'm a little sad at how many people are getting unsubscribed. Love you, Gina Marie, because I don't want it to shrink. I want it to grow. I want to find more people that want to be a part of this. Jessica Colley, I'm so glad you made it. I don't think I answered you since, but I love, did you get my email about the dress that you picked for the wedding? I'm really excited for you. Um, oh God, my brother is going home on hospice today. Really tough, Gina Marie, really tough times. Hospice is so tough. Now I love hospice. So I will say they have huge hearts. They're amazing people and he's in good hands, but I'm so sorry. Um, Kate D, Reese, you were there for my hell of a winter with my five-year loss, but you succeeded at making me laugh. You know, it's a powerful thing, Kate. Thank you for saying that. Math Manx, so sorry, Joe. I've lost students before. It's so rough. Yes, for sure, Math Manx. It's horrible. It's horrible. Emma knows this group is so lo lovely. I would... Uh, I would definitely like to be a part of it. Emma, you are welcome. You don't have to ask. You just be here with us and you can lurk or you can talk, girl, and we will welcome you with open arms. Tammy, uh, I had a great time last night. Thanks for the laughs. It was really fun. It was really fun last night. I love doing stuff with Tommy. I love, uh, thank you, Sharon. I love how relaxed Tommy is on that channel. He needs this more than you guys could ever know. Laughs me is your father-in-law's funeral tomorrow. Seems like a rough week for many of us. It does, but you know what? And I'm sorry, laughs me. But again, I don't mean this insensitively. I'm glad that we can kind of all share in it together. I don't know if that's selfish of me, but I mean that in the best way. Like, I'm sorry that you're going through that, but I, I think it's there's something to say for many of us going through it. We understand, we can empathize, we get it. Uh, we all need to share every video on to all friends. It will spread Reese's channel. You know, I don't know what will spread the word, but thank you for saying that. Uh, Matrix Rabbit. Hey, Todd. I may not be in chat, but I'm still here to support you. Making blocks. So listening, lurking. Hey, chat. Hey, Reese. Todd, I hope you're feeling better too. Didn't you hurt your back? I think you said that the other day. Yeah. 
for sure. It, you don't get over, I mean, for me, I can't speak for everybody. I don't get over a loss. It gets easier as time passes, but I still talk to Fred every day. Katie says, you're all the backbone holding me up during my decade long breakup. And I love you each for it. Katie is really going through a rough breakup and she was with him for a long time and she has really helped. And uh, it's okay, Pam. I'm just glad you made it. She is, this has, this chat has helped her with that so much. She's talked through it with us. She's processed it with us. We've given our feedback to her. That helps guys. That helps so much. It's getting better. Good memory. You did hurt your back. I thought you did, Todd. Good. I'm glad you're getting better. Um, Donna Marie, I love that. My jaws and belly hurt so bad last night from all the laughing. Uh, Tommy is so funny. Those of us who feel supported and loved will never leave you, Reese. That's true, Phoenix Rising. We won't leave each other. It's not just me, guys. Dirty Mouse, I'm trying to decide on divorce. You are all here for me and I need it so much. We are here for you through that, girl. I totally understand. Yeah, just Jojo, you don't get over a loss. You learn to live with it. Your life builds around it. That's true. Mm -hmm. And it's all in how you process it. Yeah, Gina Marie. That's so sweet, Pam. Katie, we are all here for you. It's true, we are. Karen Hall, welcome. Love that you made it. Robin Miners, last night was so much fun. Tommy is such a hoot. He is so fun. And again, I know all of you have said this and you agree with me. He is really more chill. He's not answering emails right now. He's just doing what he should be doing. Dude was overloaded. It was too much. You could tell. I mean, I could really tell. Um, it is Katie, but I'm really happy that he is coasting. He's, he's, his mental stability is better. Uh, it's just a good thing. It's a good thing. And I want that for all of us. Taking a break is sometimes what you got to do. And he's just having a good time. Grief says math makes is love with no place to go. When we find a place to put it, it gets easier. That's a good point, Math Manx. It's a really good point. That's okay, Lori Hart. I'm here a lot, but it's hard for me to come out of my corner. That's okay. Understood. I'm just glad that you are here with us and you continue to lurk if you need to. You do what's comfortable for you. Um, but I wanted to talk about, uh, yeah, I love seeing Tommy happy, Lumen. I love it. And, oh, I love that, just JoJo. You can see the difference in Tommy. I'm so glad to see it. Yeah, I can too. I can too. And it lifts me up knowing that he's getting better. It makes me feel more at ease and just happier in life knowing he's going up, you know, because that was tough for him. Kfic, you're in the chat, by the way. I'm wearing my bracelet you got me. It just made me think of you. Um, Heather, Heather, Kansas. I love Tommy and I love you. The Relate About is helping all of us. Good. I'm happy to hear that. Never felt so close to a group as I did when we learned about Tampa B-Man's flaps. Kfic, that is so true. Yeah, her flaps. By the way, speaking of flaps, I got a lot of pictures of your up close and personal private vaginas. And um, I just want to say thank you. Uh, thank you to the people who sent those. Um, it gets me to feel like I got to do that right along at my OB OBGYN's office. Ooh, really? Your Lyft driver was a Scientologist? How do you know? Ooh, that's weird. That had to have been awkward for you. Um, but thank you for all the um, all the uh, up-close photos of your coot coots. I really appreciate that. Melissa H. Popping in, replay crew member that has been around from the beginning. Really love having these earlier lives when you can. Send you all the love. Melissa, I love you, girl. Thank you for saying that. Kuala Lu, tomorrow's your birthday. Share it with your mom. Yeah. Oh shit. Thanks for reminding me. Tomorrow's my mom's birthday, guys, the 18th. I've always been aware of sad and sometimes well-known tragic things that occur around this time. I'm sorry you are struggling. Kuala Lu, that's okay. Happy birthday early to you, girl. I love that. I love that. That's amazing. Um, I know. I know he does that, Armine. Okay, Ashley Marie. Love you, girl. Uh, people sent me pictures, Courtney, of their vaginas. I really am close to this group. Guys, it helps. I wanted to uh, see a couple vaginas in the wild. 
Uh, how many cooter pictures did you get? What's your overall opinion? Snowflakes? Uh, I think I got six or seven so far. Um, that's okay, Anna Witt. You don't have to send me yours. Uh, oh, it was so fun in Clearwater. Nice. Um, definitely snowflakes. Definitely. Um, I saw a couple that I got a little jealous about. Not going to lie. Um, I saw one this morning that was older than me by at least a decade. And the thing looked, um, pretty high and tight. Um, and it made mine look like the Marlboro man. So, um, yeah, Joe, well, just ask and maybe they'll send you some, uh, definitely it made my cooter, uh, it kind of looked like, made mine look like Clint Eastwood or like Tommy Lee Jones. Like mine just looked pretty, uh, kind of looked like Tommy Lee Jones in uh, No Country for Old Men. And this cooter was 10 years old. I think it might've been more than 10 years older. And it had like a facelift. This cooter was unbelievably tight. Looked good. Looked real good. Um, trying to think who would it play in a movie if it was a cooter. Mine would definitely be Tommy Lee Jones. This cooter, I would say for its age... Not that I've seen these movies, but for some reason I thought of like a youthful, like a Robert Pattinson from those like Twilight movies. It was like a, it was like a youthful coot. Uh, two flaps. Um, it was a two flap. I, I don't know, Jessica Ali, but it looked like it got a facelift. Um, stop it. Tommy's going to be mad. He was already mad. I told him this story. Yeah. It looked like it had been going to the gym or something. Um, yeah. I love you, Pam. Thank you for that. Um, been through a lot. And because of Reese and you all, I made it through. There were times I didn't think I was going to. So thank you to everyone. That's why I still stand with and love you all. Pam, that's beautiful. I love you. And I'm sorry you've been through a lot lately. Yeah. My vagina looked like the Marlboro man compared to this thing. It was awful. Uh, did it sparkle? It was kind of shiny, Joe. Now I think it's a waxed one, which that's not, I don't know. I can't wax mine. I'm too afraid. Um, how do you keep the coot young? I'm wondering if this person like um, perhaps like lays out, like I wonder if she just like lays out and excuse me, I am wearing shorts by the way, I have shorts on, but like lays out in the sun and just like lets the vitamin D into it. Um, is it the same as if you get sun on your face though? And that kind of ages you. So I don't know, but this thing uh, was pretty golden. It looks good. Um, Paula Puffer. Uh, flap lift surgery. I don't know. I'll have to respond to this person and ask, but um, you would think that getting some fresh sun on the coot would age it. It's genetic. Okay. I'm just saying when I took a look at this thing, I don't know, maybe you shouldn't send me any more pictures of your vaginas because I don't know. Some of them I looked at and I was like, all right, all right. I didn't think badly or poorly of any of them. Um, but this particular one that I saw this morning, I was like, why does, I mean, I'm serious. I looked at my vagina and I was like, why does my vagina look like Clint Eastwood in Gran Torino right now? Like not a young Clint Eastwood, but like, wasn't that like his last movie? Like, I know he's still alive, but my vagina, it, it, I feel like if it could talk, it would even sound like him in Gran Torino. Like, get off my porch. Like, I don't know. But suddenly I was like, this isn't making me feel better. It made me feel worse. And I was kind of hoping to feel better, but this thing was glistening. It was nice. It just looked like a nice tight. It was high and tight. Um, yeah, it was like, it was just a, it was a youthful, it was just very youthful. You know, when you just see, it was just a stunner. It was a stunner. It was, uh, it was like on the, on the showroom floor type of thing. And I want to see them in the wild. I don't want to see a freshly bathed freaking, you know, uh, waxed one. So send me your worst pictures, please. Send me, send me one after, uh, you know, a long Friday night. I don't know. Do we need to be sunning our vaginas, Katie? I don't know. Can you look into it and get back with me? Ooh, a sunburned cooter. That sounds painful as hell. Really, Kayfic? 
Oh, his last movie was a mule. Okay. Okay. But the, in fairness, Kathy, and I didn't see that movie, that movie, but it, it, my vagina definitely was, that's the personality I feel like of my vagina and it matches his face. It was like, I, it's immediately what I thought of when I saw this particular vagina this morning, I flashed to the Marlboro man. And then I was like, my vagina is like Clint Eastwood from Grand Torino. It's just this like, get out of here. Get the hell off my porch. Like just this like awful, like barks at everybody. Um, yeah, a lot of different views of vaginas I've gotten. Your, yours would scare me. Then send it over for God's sakes, Paula. Quit being a tease. Phoenix, gonna lurk. Take time. Okay, you go ahead and lurk. Um, haven't looked at my cooter lately, but I'm pretty sure it would look like a piece of dead meat. That's what mine looks like. The first time Clint Eastwood has ever been compared to a cooter. I mean, kind of a badass badge, Clint Eastwood's voice. Clint Eastwood is a badass, Katie, but I don't want my freaking vagina to look like his face. Um, it was. It was the Rolex of vaginas. I wouldn't want a skin cancer cooter. Third eye open, you have you you progress into the land of the aged cooter. <sighs> yeah, Kualu, I get that too. Um, I don't know, Katie. Yeah, do the research on this. Um yeah, get off my lawn. My vagina is like an old man that just shouts and yells at everybody. Millions of peaches, peaches for me. Yeah, guys have penis envy. Nice to know we have, yeah, we have vag, I have vag envy for sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think Gwyneth Paltrow has a nice vagina. I don't know why, but I just kind of guess that she does. Oh, Shark Week started for you today. Mine just ended, Chaotic Bleach. Yeah, no, I get it. Don't look at it. Don't don't look directly at it for sure. You need to use it more. You don't use it, you lose it. Okay, Lisa, I'm happy to do that. Happy to oblige. What are these tools you speak of, Kafik? And Kaz is wondering what the hell they just walked into. I don't blame you, Kaz. You you may want to walk back out. I you know look the chat's dropped again. Is there really only two hundred and ninety one people in here? That is a low ass number. Am I losing people? Am I losing it? You guys don't like me anymore. No, because you guys like me because you're here. Oh, rain virus. Okay, didn't know. Uh, Robin Miners, love you, girl. Uh, again, I say it's all about the angles of the photographs. It isn't, Katie. You can't get my vagina at a good angle. You just can't. It's not going to happen for me. Um, I have that what called Tommy calls it puff. Mine's chubby, um, and it's 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 truly does have the personality of Clint Eastwood and Gran Torino. Like you know when somebody's just not photogenic because they're just kind of an asshole. I feel like that's what my vagina is. She's always in a bad mood, and I feel like she's just got an attitude. Um. Yeah, I think Gwyneth steams hers. I think that's right. Oh, yeah. Charlotte York's vagina was depressed because she thought it was ugly. Remember she had to keep a vagina journal? Big Z, dear vagina. Remember when Carrie said that? That was so funny. Um, maybe my vagina is depressed. Oh, Anna, Anna, wait, you got a new guy and he likes my cooter and I take his word for it. I can't do that. Do you know how many men have said you have a great vagina? And I'm like, you're a liar and a fraud. I get really upset. I can't accept that. Like I've had many men say you have good boobs. And I'm like, don't lie to me. And then they're like, you have horrible boobs. And I'm like, oh, thank you. Thank you so much. I knew it. I knew it. I knew this. Um, oh, J9. Yeah. Clint Eastwood. Uh, Matrix. I've never played Scrabble. Gwyneth created Goop. I've used a few Goop products, Abigail, and I've not been disappointed. That's why I have low numbers, because I'm streaming to the non-Americans. I don't know. It is what it is. We're still going to stick around, numbers and all. doesn't matter to me. Oh, really, Pam? Yeah, it's hard to accept me and my body, Don Gloves. I don't know why. Uh, Kate, there are funny peens also. You know, I've never seen a peen that I didn't like, really, I don't think. 
Uh, Layla, when they say, uh, okay, she steams her vagina. I don't even know what that means. It sounds uncomfortable. When they say great vagina, do they mean feel or looks or both? Damn it. Where's Tommy when you need him? We got to get these questions to him. I don't know the answer to that. Brian Lucas, you mind weighing in on this? When a guy says he likes it, he's telling you the truth. Okay. So Brian, if a guy says you have a uh, Joel Sachs, if a guy says, okay, well, we already know his answer then. Cause he just said he's never seen an ugly one. Um, so if they say you have a great vagina, do they mean like it's comfortable like a minivan or do they mean it looks good <laughs> or Cena, don't blame the rest of the world. She's like, keep these earlier lives. It is funny how sex in the city was important, is important to all of us. Emily, I love sex in the city. Okay, Matrix, that's cool. I did not know that, laughs me. I didn't even know there was a protest going on. She puts hot steam up her vagina? Why? That sounds dangerous. That sounds dangerous as hell. Hey, Mary. Oh, everybody was watching a protest. Hey, there's Shelly Kelly. There's Mary. Okay, so maybe, nope, never mind. Dipped back down. That's okay, guys. It's okay. That's all right. Um, oh my God, Tampa B, I love sex in the city. You're giving the guy sex. Hey, John Van Geese, I'm glad you made it, man. We're trying to get the opinion of a man about vaginas, John. VT Kitten, love you. All right, Donna Marie, I see it too. Little Bubble, I feel like I haven't seen you for a minute. How weird. We're doing a roll call in the middle of this live. That's so funny. Um, I don't know. Steam doesn't sound good to put up a vagina. You know, speaking of that, I kind of had a question about this yesterday. Can you have sex in water or is that going to cause a UTI? Like, can you have, I've never had sex in a hot tub or a pool. Can you? Everybody's done everything except me. I haven't done anything. You do have some experience with vaginas. I knew this, John. I knew it. Yeah, it is, Sophia. How do you steam? I don't really care how you steam your vagina because I'm not going to do it. Hey, Ruthie Brown. You like sex on a beach? I've never had sex on, I've never had sex in public. Hey, Jamie Palmer. Thank you, Audit Golden Era. Thank you so much. Uh, what's your favorite candle scent? You know, you can have sex in water. I have many times. Okay, Karen. Uh, I love citrus. Like I love orange or I love like a cinnamon. Um, I mean, if you want to do like a blueberry for the kitchen, that's cool. But I like citrus, like an orange. That's my favorite. Don't care for having sex in water. UTI city. I don't want a UTI. I'm not going to. I just, we, this came up yesterday and I wondered about it. Hockey guy. Of course it is. I don't think guys care as much as we think they do. You are a straight guy, Todd. I knew this. Alleyoop, welcome. I've had plenty in both and the C. Don't judge me. Not judging. I'm glad that you have uh, something to weigh in on here, Stella. So steaming the cooter sounds awful. Uh, it can be a bummer. Outside of the UTI risk, water isn't great lubricant and washes away the natural lubricant you make. Yeah, I wouldn't think, uh, oh, hey, Mark. I would be happy for any type of vagina that was part of a loving, warm woman. Okay, Mark, that makes me a little sad for you because you're adorable and uh, you deserve a nice, loving, warm vagina and woman attached to it. I hope the best for you there, Mark. Um, so can be great. Wait, so can be great or can be rug burn in your cooter. Oh my God, with a side of UTI. No man is worth that. Thank you, John. Thank you for weighing in on this. You had sex on a balcony on a cruise ship? That's awesome, sassy savage. Sex in water just sounds... I would think steaming your vagina is not... It is, mm -mm. Sand inside the vagina sounds like the worst thing. Yeah, you don't think about it too much, Brian. Just happy to be there most of the time. Brian is comfortable in vaginas. He said it's very comfortable, just like a minivan. I just think sex sounds uncomfortable in a pool or water because like you guys said, it's not going to be a good lubricant. Dating my husband got caught by police having sex at a park in our car. Cop asked if I was there on my own free will. I said yes. And they left. Yeah. Yarn prefer. I'm not doing it. I'm not comfortable doing that. I would be so embarrassed to get caught. 
Like, what if you didn't have a cool cop and the cop was like, yeah, uh, this is indecent exposure. You're going to jail. Oh my God, that would be embarrassing. Bye, Marisa. I always pee after sex. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not that great, Joe. John, that's terrifying. I don't think I, I don't, I don't know about having cruise ship sex balcony like that. Katie. I, hey, info dump truck. I'm not really, I don't, I'm not, I don't get my, like, I don't get a thrill thinking about having sex out in public where people can see you. I'm not against the idea. I think I could still do it. I'm not super weird. I mean, I don't really want everybody seeing my fupa flaps flapping around. I mean, it's not an attractive thing, but I just don't think I'm up for it. If I had a rocking hot bod, what? You could get labeled as a sex offender. Oh, okay. Forget it. I'm not doing it. I don't want to do it. Yeah. I've never had sex in a shower either. Um, not for me, sassy. Kfic, I don't know. Sex in public equals registered sex. Is that the truth? If you get caught having sex in a parking lot, you're going to be a registered sex offender for that? Oh, hell no. No. In it now. People can get in big ass trouble for having sex in public. Absolutely not then. Blakey, I was thinking about you earlier. Love you. Math makes, then it's a no from me. And guys, I don't need to. It's not thrilling to even think about. I would rather have sex in the privacy of a hotel, my home. Yeah, I didn't know that. And I'm not into it. Like, it's not something I feel like I need to accomplish anyway. It's just not my thing. Damn, Brian, I did not know that. Abigail says, Reese, you're also a public figure now as a YouTuber. You want to err on the side of caution for that reason as well. Potential for uh, compromising pictures. Um, nobody knows who I am, Abigail. I would not call me a public figure at all. I mean, nobody knows me. I, I know what you're saying, but... Even I think about that too, because I often go out like on my back deck to tan sometimes and I'll just wear my underwear and like a little uh, bra or something. I don't care. Like I wouldn't care if somebody snapped a picture of me and put it out. I don't care. It doesn't bother me. Uh, it's just not a thing. I would not. I don't know. But I don't think of, I don't think I'm a public figure. I think you have to be pretty big. I think of Aaron as a public figure for sure. Um, but even Aaron, people don't recognize outside of Florida much, I don't think. No one's running up to him like Tom Hanks. I mean, we're not that big of a deal. We're just not. And I don't mean that in a mean way. We're just, it's, I'm, no one knows who I am. What is the craziest, strangest place you've had sex for Reese in the chat? Um, sorry, I'm going back for a minute. Okay. Uh, what is the craziest, strangest place? Not, I can't even answer that. I've always had vanilla boring sex in plain places, Joe, like home or hotels. I've never had sex anywhere. I don't think, I don't think anywhere. I'm pretty boring there. On the hood of my car in a blizzard on a beach in Fiji. That's cool. Yeah, John. Roof of an abandoned building. That's kind of cool. Damn, Kathy Ann. Strip club. Hey, Susan P. In a cow field behind a graveyard. Wow. You might win that one. Who are you guys talking about? He literally lives in a dimension he himself created in his head. There's no penetrating the membrane with logic with that one. Who are you guys talking about? <laughs> Why don't I get to know? Oh, in a photo booth? You're getting big on YouTube. It's compliment taken. It. It's a matter of time before you get recognized. I appreciate that, but I don't think I'm ever going to get that big. Oh, Mitch Brisker. 
You know, have I met him? Did I ever do a live with him? I don't think so. I think he came into my live once. I don't know that dude. He wasn't for me. I can tell you that. Oh, don't worry about it, Blake. I just wondered who you guys were talking about. At a park in your hometown. All right. Fourth of July, Paula. That's uh, one way to celebrate for sure. America. Uh, okay, John. You dodged a bullet. I don't get involved in the drama. You guys know this. I don't, I don't even know about it. Like I don't, I don't go over and seek it out. I just don't. Um, on a beach. I don't know. I'd be afraid. To, I mean, it sounds like fun to have sex on a beach, but if you're going to get in trouble for it, not worth it to me. No way. On a motorcycle. Well, I'm uh, exceed the weight limit to be doing that. He said there are no kids in Scientology anymore in an interview. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. Oh, and he called Serge a liar. He said vulgar things about good people. Oh, okay. That's why I don't, uh, I don't like it. I don't like, I don't understand why it's like same side, dude. We're ex Scientologists. Let's help with the cause. Let's help with the movement. I don't understand why. And he's not the only one from what I've heard, from what I've heard, he's not the only one who are ex Scientologists to kind of eat each other. They tear at each other. I don't understand. Then we're still being Scientologists by doing that. I don't get it. It's like, why aren't we standing side by side and fighting this? Why are we picking at each other? It doesn't, I don't know. That's why I just stay out of it. Doesn't make any sense to me. But yeah, I would do it with a blanket. I would do it with a blanket. Yeah. That's true. Oh, in a sauna? Ooh, yeah, no. That triggers me. That makes me think of my days of doing the five different purifs in Scientology. I could never have sex in a sauna. All right, Don Gloves. Love you, girl. You got to have a blanket for sure. You got to have a blanket. Um, and that's kind of part of why I titled this video, guys. I don't focus on the experience much, whether it be sex or anything. I focus on the environment and I'm trying not to do that. Me too for you, Valerie. Yeah. He was a cool dude. Um, I'm trying to focus more on things instead of like, like I will, I will focus on and attach a memory to something because it was an awful environment. Like if I go somewhere with cool people, but the food sucked and like the service sucks, I, I equate that to, it was a bad time. I'm like, Oh, I hated that place. I hated what I ordered. It was bad. I'm trying to not do that anymore and just focus on the experience. Like how was the actual experience? though, with what the intention of what you were doing, does that make sense? I, 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 that didn't come up in therapy or anything. I'm just been noticing that I do that. Like, and I'm thinking about this even with our sex talk right now. Like it was awful because I got sand in my cooter. Yeah. But was it cool? Like you made out like, you know, he went, uh, um, he got the sand out. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, maybe a little bit in the butt, fun play, nothing terrible, nothing scary. Um, you know, you guys watched the sun come up. Like I would, if, it, if that happened to me, I'd be like, I hated it. I got sand in my coot. Like try not to focus on the bad. What about the entire experience? Sure. You got sand in your coot, but you went and dipped it, you know, and got it out. Yeah. John, what do you guys think of that? Do you, does that make sense? What I'm saying? I'm trying more to focus on just like, how was it as a whole instead of like, Oh, the food was awful. You know what I mean? I'll have to look at that when I'm done, Christy. Yeah. Like just the company. Yeah, yeah, Emily, perfect sense. Okay, does anybody else do that? Sand is definitely an exfoliant. Does anybody else do that? It sounds like real growth, Dee Marie. Uh, ooh, under a waterfall, that would be cool. Dang, Deeming, you've had some... Uh, cool experiences boning down. Yes. Yeah, seeing the glass half full, but it, it's just looking at it from a different, yes, like a different angle filtering through the kaleidoscope. That's what I like to call it. 
do you guys do that? True, Layla Bradley. Do you guys do that? Like, do you try to focus on like, yeah, but how was my experience? Not just how terrible the steak was. I like that. Ooh, I like that, John. Uh, Miranda, you're welcome. Kind of in a sad mood from a dude. So I appreciate, okay. I hate that, Miranda. I'm sorry. Brian, I would guess that you do, except for when you see Bo and you just think he has a miserable life. Emily, I love that. So John, in the past, but I try to look at things holistically now. Totally, dude. I love that. It's an effort. Yeah. It's just something I'm trying to kind of put a spin on. I'm like, hmm, I kind of like this. Yeah, I kind of like this. I like trying to look at it from a different angle, from a different lens. Yeah, bucket list, Katie. Katie, you're going on the cruise, right? True, Brian. Katie, if you're going on the cruise, maybe we can find somebody for you to bone on the cruise. And I'm sure we can find a waterfall and reenact that. How many guys are going on the cruise that are not spoken for? And maybe, maybe Katie, I just find you a different guy on the cruise that wasn't a part of SPTV. I'm pretty good at this kind of thing. Let me, uh, let me do a little work. Let me do a little work here. I feel like we could find somebody for you to bone down with Katie. And as they should, Katie has the nicest set of boobs and she has the most pretty face. And I haven't seen a picture of her vagina yet. Um, I'm sure she's sending one to me, but honestly, um, I, if, I would put money on it for sure that it's nice. I guarantee you it's nice. Katie, don't you have two flaps? I think you're a two flapper. Um, I think that would be great. Uh, how many people on the cruise are bringing their partners? That's a good question. Um, with time, I can look back on things with the positivity. Not easy for me in the moment. Understood. Stay away from drummers, Katie. Yes. Hey, Shelly. Love you, girl. Um, what do you think about that idea, Katie? What do you think about it? I wouldn't mind trying to find someone for you. I guarantee you Tommy would be all over that. Not your vagina. I mean, finding someone for you. I agree, Koala Lou. It's just sometimes easier to complain and be in the moment, Koala Lou, and not appreciate the experience. So I'm really trying to work, work on that. Drummers and DJs. Oh, poet, you're a drummer. Yeah. Okay. Katie, you have two flaps. I knew that you had a two flap vagina. Um, and I already know what your boobs look like. You have the most beautiful face. Um, negativity is a learned behavior guys. I think, uh, definitely on this cruise, I think there's somebody out there that would be interested in your flaps. Shelly, uh, we've just been kind of all over the place today. I would too, John. That's great. Uh, drummer, wait, not, not that Kiwi. Sorry, Kiwi. Appreciating the experience is being in the moment. I would argue that complaining more often takes you out of the moment. A hundred percent. John, you bring it. You're bringing it today. I've been complaining since Monday. Yeah, that's okay. You had, you had good reason to. Find Katie an island man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think Tommy and I can work on finding you a guy. I will look for him based on looks. Um, and Tommy will look based on personality because he's good at, he's good at reading people. Um, and I just have a feeling that you have a really, uh, top shelf cooter, um, just like your boobs. Hey, look at that. Simone, thank you for becoming a member, my friend. Yeah, Shelly. Making you cry. Well, Katie, you're gorgeous girl. And I just think, you know, the cruise is coming up. Um, you want to have sex under a waterfall. Let's make that happen for you. Um, this is like the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Let's make that happen for Katie, you guys. I really have high hopes that uh, we can find some guy that uh, could show her a really good time. There are, like Tommy talked about last night, Tommy is gifted, I think, in that department. And there's got to be more than Tommy. There has to be. Guys, that was a hot conversation last night, by the way. I really, do you guys like that, by the way? I need to know. How many more times can I say, by the way? 
How do we feel about it? How do we feel about talking about sex and that topic sometimes, like once or twice a week? Are you guys up for that? All right, Ursina, love you. Go to bed. We love you, girl. Oh, thank you, Ursina. I'm glad that uh, you could make it. You loved it. Well, Layla, I know you loved it. Last night was great. Okay. I just want to make sure, like, there was one person in the Facebook group that said something like, uh, I don't like that topic. And I thought, okay, well, that's fine. Um, I like that, k -Fic. I just understood what you said. You love the talks on the re relate about. Okay. We're adults. And also, I think it's like, Tommy called me today and he said something and I was like, really? He goes, Reese, people don't usually talk about that stuff. They don't. And I was like, I always have. Agreed, Ace. And if you don't like it, it's like, skip, skip the live. It's not that big of a deal. John. I like that being open about, I think that being open about stuff like sex is important and adults should do it more often. John, I totally agree. It's 2024, man. We can move out of the weird. Yes, I agree. My gosh, I'm in Reese and Tommy's hands. Make a wish. Yes, we're going to find him. Uh, so question four flaps. Does that mean they're longer or wider? Just more of them? I think they're a little bit longer. Donna, I get it. Deeming, I appreciate your tips. I know that you're good at it too, Deeming. I love that, Lori. Give a trigger warning at the beginning so people can skip it. I guess so. Uh, sex with your true love is so great. Feels so right. Absolutely. I just thought it's not always to be funny either. I like the topic. I like talking about it. Um, I know you do, Joel. I feel like it's okay to normalize it, guys. I feel like it's okay to talk about that, especially having a man and a woman talk about it and just their different experiences. Um, if you're not open but respectful about topics like sex, you'll always be afraid to talk about it and we'll never learn or we'll learn, never will, will never learn or will learn from mostly negative experiences. Agreed with you 100%. Catherine, isn't that interesting that you checked? That's the thing. I, yeah, I kind of agree, Yarn Prepper. It's hard to give warnings because sometimes it just comes up, but I will try. SB, yeah, it's great that you can talk about anything. I'm always learning. I, I mean, this is kind of, yeah, Jazzy Girl, but this is kind of what I mean. If you don't talk about it, you don't learn your likes and dislikes and what's you're comfortable with, what you're comfortable with. Um, yeah, and it feels, I agree, Kiwi. It feels organic, like a proper conversation between friends. It's not like we're doing, we're not taking it there to make you guys uncomfortable. And I know you know that, but I just think it's interesting to discuss. Is it something I wanna go over with Tommy every day? No, but I do think it's something that's kind of fun to go over, to talk about, to discuss. I don't know, I just... Uh, Yeah, Kate D. Yeah, Sassy, we talk about everything. And I agree with that little flower. It's good to hear a man's perspective. And I love how articulate Tommy is. He's not trying to be goofy or stupid. He's very, very intelligent about it. And he's very articulate. And I appreciate it. And I know a lot of you do because I get private messages saying so. Kaz? I got out of an eight month relationship about two months ago and a guy on my course has expressed interest, but I have been a bit hesitant. Um, well, you have to do, go with what you're comfortable with Kaz. And if you're interested in already dating again, go for it. If he gives you some kind of a red flag or a, a, a gut feeling, you need to go with that though. Hey, Jennifer Folsom. Yeah, Abigail, you get uncomfortable with it for anyone else in the boat. I just do what I do, stay silent and wait it out. Totally. Oh, okay. You've watched Dr. Ruth since you were 12. Agreed. Just Jojo. Yeah, Katie, I just think it's a great topic. Is it for everybody? No. Wow, Jazzy girl. That's interesting. 
you know, I just want to apologize in advance to the people who get uncomfortable um, because it isn't, I'm, I can speak for Tommy here. We're not trying to make you uncomfortable by any means. We're not trying to make people run people off or make them uncomfortable. Um, I just think it's an interesting topic. It's an interesting conversation and, and I'm there for it. I really enjoy it, but it isn't an everyday thing. Guys, no, we go all over the place and I go all over the place on my channel. Matter of fact, I was going to say before I forget, holy crap, because I'm going to end here in a minute. Uh, tomorrow morning at 10, Lady Co. Live. Um, Ashley Marie, I'm glad you made it back, girl. Um, 10 o'clock and she's got a bunch of new stuff and I'm kind of excited to see it. And I kind of want to talk to her about order, ordering some different things that I looked at. So we'll see. Jenny, that's okay. I'm just glad you made it for a second, girl. But you go get some sleep. We love you. It's just not, it's just, we're just, I, doesn't mean I'm right here, okay? You don't have to agree with me. And people do have different morals and values. And I respect that. All you got to do is turn it off, though, if you're not into it, into that topic for the day. But I do truly believe it's important to talk about it. It's an, it's an important thing in a relationship. Sex is important. And why wouldn't you go with, you know, what you're talk to your partner about it or what you're into or what you're not? Um, yeah, it's educational sprinkled with a bit of laughter. Yeah. Bye, Abigail. Have a good one. Um, anyway, I just think it's I think it's. It's a fascinating topic. I really do. And we don't know where it's going to go. And uh, I just like that. I like that. I think it's interesting. Tommy and I are both, though, I can tell you this because he's told me. Tommy and I are both very, very sexual beings. Like sex is at the top of our list. Sex is important to us. It's important because we are such communicators. I see that about us. Sex is a form of communication. So it makes total sense to me that him in a relationship or me in a relationship, sex has to exist and you have to be able to talk about it. Yeah, Joe Virus, totally. So that probably is also where it comes from, that we're just both very sexual creatures when it comes to that. Hey, Lazy Silver. And I like that about us because then we can both have a conversation about it. And then you guys can chime in and tell us your experiences and do a call in about it. Again, don't want to make the show about that. Want to talk about all kinds of things. But I just think that's kind of a neat subject. No, Jazzy girl, I did not. Yeah, I like that, Paula. Third eye open, I don't know yet. I'm not sure yet. Uh, is an, sex is an energy exchange too. Yeah, for people who say, and I'm not, I don't disagree with these people because it's just, it's guys, sex is subjective. There's no like how it should be or how it should go, or how important to you it is. So some people say sex isn't everything or, you know, you can have a really good relationship and not have sex because you're just not, there's no chemistry there. Or you just don't have good sex, but you have a good relationship. I know for Tommy and I, it has to be both. Like you have to have good sex. Not everybody feels that way. And that doesn't make it wrong or right. Oh yeah. The love languages. Totally Kiwi girl. Mine, I was 50% quality time and 50% physical touch. My love language, which doesn't surprise me at all. I like that SB. It makes it easier for me to talk about what others do. I don't think you should censor yourselves. I agree. Because we're not trying to upset people. Like we're not trying to push the envelope, you know, push boundaries. Interesting, Catherine J. Interesting. It's just, it's a fun topic. And I like going there sometimes. And sometimes I don't. There, there are some times that I'm not really up for talking about it because sometimes I get overwhelmed talking about it and it gets boring for me. And I feel like I've already said it, it's been said, but then there are some times that I'm like, this is a good topic. And I think last night we really went into some good things. Tommy had great, great insight last night. I thought you guys, from a man's perspective, he really brought it to the table. I was surprised. I learned some things. Yes. Shelly Kelly. It's important to have healthy discussions about sex. Yeah, Brenda, there's people can leave. There's other stuff to watch. And I don't mean leave and don't ever come back. 
I just mean leave for the night. We'll have a different topic the next time. You and Tommy, the greatest. I'm supportive and love, love, love y'all together. The conversation, the wisdom, all of it. Love you, Katie. We love you back, girl. That's amazing. Interesting, Kiwi girl. For those that have been in high control religions that have recently broken away, there is desire to explore, but the inexperience makes acting on those desires a very scary thing. Absolutely. That's such a good point, Mark. Love you, Kate D. Hey, true to it. I agree with that, Asen. It's about balance of everything. My ex thought having uh, great sex solves any problem. Oh, not at all. As a matter of fact, it can work, worsen problems. You have that too, where you guys, I've had toxic relationships where I had really good sex, but the relationship is horrible. So yeah, you, you, it has to be a balance. It has to be a balance. Yeah, I appreciate uh, Tommy's openness and his perspective about how important it is to become educated about your partner. Absolutely. I loved that about him. I'm sure he's been a very good husband and partner to women in the past. I'm sure he has. Kind of surprised that any of those, now I was just going to say, I'm surprised those relationships ended, but as far as I know, he was on drugs. Uh, that was part of his past where he was doing drugs. So he hasn't had a real shot at it, I don't think. And I believe if Tommy had not been on drugs, those marriages probably would have worked. How can you improve sex if you don't talk about it? That's true, Paula. Being out of a relationship for a long time makes it scary too. Sorry, I feel drippy. Yeah, remember without sex, our species would die. It's ridiculous to put such a stigma against it. I agree, yeah. Have fun, K-Fake. Love you, Christy. Hmm. Interesting, Jenny. I do too. I like that Tommy speaks from experience, guys. And he's got a lot of experience. And I don't mean just having sex. I mean, like when he was talking about the guy in prison and the guy's point of view about women and how Tommy corrected that and like showed him that, no, like that's not the case. The guy that said like um, oral was a sin. I like that story he shared. He really brings a lot to the table. And I love that. Shelly, I dated someone who was multi-orgasmic. I've never heard of a male doing that. Man, he was great in the sack, but he was a loaf, jobless. Yeah. That's what I mean. That's a bummer. That's a bummer. Brian, it wasn't an issue with stuff in the bedroom that made my ex-girlfriend dump me. We had other issues that we didn't talk about or I was blind to until it was too late. I know. And I'm sorry, Brian. That's a bummer, man. Jennifer Folsom, thank you for your super chat, babe. Friend tax. Yeah, Tommy seems like he uh, is... I don't, I don't want to sound disrespectful and say he's good in the sack. Okay, he probably is. But deeper than that, to me, Tommy seems like he would take care of his partner emotionally. Do I have a booger hanging out of my nose or is that? No, that's on my screen. Never mind. It looks like he would take care of his partner emotionally and physically. That's what I gathered last night from that. I did. Uh, women love oral. If you don't, you haven't had a good experience. Yeah, they do. Yeah. And that's true, Shelly. I had a female friend once who didn't have a good experience with oral. And so she like, rejected it. She was like, no, I don't like that. I don't like guys going down on me. And I was like, you just haven't had the right person because oral and I like giving too. Like I, it's not like I'm selfish. I'm like, Hey, just get it done. I enjoy it, especially when they know what they're doing, but I love giving it back, reciprocating Mark Hardman. Thank you, Mark. That really helps me, Mark. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That is so kind of you. You helped me and you helped 10 other people, Mark. Thank you. Shannon C. It was. Yeah. I love Tommy's viewpoint. It makes, he makes it make sense. Totally. Yeah. He's good at that too. He's good at breaking it down for us to where we really understand and it's all detailed and laid out. Yeah. Catherine J. It's a major thing for me. My partner being there for me emotionally and in my last relationship when I realized he could never be there for me, like I was for him. That's the other hard part. That's why relationships are truly hard. It has to be just the right match. And that's where you run into trouble. That's not an easy thing. Kaz, I'm so glad Mark gave you a membership. 
Oh, yeah. Sassy Savage. That's awful. Really, Shelly? Interesting. I like it myself. I do. Being good at sex is super easy. You pay attention to what your partner likes and you do that. Then you pay attention to what your partner doesn't like and you don't do that. I agree, John, but not all men and women are in tune like that, sadly. They just aren't. Now, I would say Tommy is. Based on what he said yesterday, it sounds like he's didn't he even say something like when he's going to sleep with someone new, he even says like, Hey, what flips your switch? Bingo. Like that's intelligent. That seems like most men would do that, but they don't. Oh, that sucks, Brian. Me too. It's baffling to me that people don't do this. I don't know. I can't speak for people, but it is, it's weird. Asen. Yeah. Women uncomfortable with getting oral. Don't trust the partner is my guess. I don't know. Um, I can tell you though, we love it, but it's true. We don't love it. If you don't know what you're doing, if you have no idea what you're doing, it can be awful too for the woman and not only awful, but awkward. Like I've been with a couple of guys that I was like, Oh no. Like, yeah, where's the switch? Uh-huh. You have to be able to talk about it and find out what the other person likes. The problem too is guys can have, you can damage their egos pretty quickly. You have to be careful how you say like, I'm not enjoying this or that's not what I'm into. Cause I've had guys be like, fine, forget it. I won't do it then. And it's like, okay, let's, let's mature and grow up a little bit. I can show you what I like. Like there should be nothing wrong with that. Like saying, Hey, I don't love that, but I really like this. Can you try this? Like that should be okay. And it's frustrating when it isn't. Oh, your last partner hated oral Paula. That's interesting. Well, they obviously had a bad experience. Totally. Are you sure? I agree. Kaz, that sucks. That's why my last relationship broke down. We had so much fun, but he would shut down emotionally and be unavailable outside the bedroom. Ugh, no. The coot is a sensitive spot. An unpredictable dude down there is a reason of concern. Yeah. And, and like Tommy said yesterday, I'm too old for that. Like I remember it in my twenties, I'm willing to show you a thing or two. I'm not about to, I'd probably not be very kind about it. Honestly, if, if these days I wouldn't be unkind, but I would probably be like, look, that's not, that's not how you do that. <laughs> it's not a DJ booth. Sorry, Joe virus. Some guys really don't know what to do with a vagina. Um, that's true, John, too. Yeah. I enjoy it, too, Shelly. I really enjoy it. I did not always enjoy doing that, uh, giving like that, until I got a little bit older, um, when I was younger, I didn't love it. It kind of grossed me out. But now as I've gotten older, I really enjoy giving. I do. I put a lot of time and effort into it. Um, I don't know. There's just something special about it. And like John was saying, like, it's easy. Like for me, it turns me on to turn my partner on. Do you know what I mean? So like when my partner is getting off, I get super turned on. So when my partner, when I'm giving, I hope this isn't uncomfortable for you guys, but when I'm giving and like the person is like, you can feel what they like, what they don't like, because you can hear what, you know, the noises they're making. If you're in tune and pay attention to that, you do more of that, whatever they liked. If they don't say it, you can tell. And um, I don't know. There's just something about that. It's, it's a, it's a, yeah. Oral requires real intimacy, Big Z. Totally. And it should be treated that way. It's not just like a quick thing. I really like to take my time and enjoy it um, and kind of figure out what the what they're into. Like Tommy said, what flips their switch. Um, it's, it's a fun thing to do, but it's also fun to let them reciprocate. So when you get a partner that's really good at that, which I've had no issues with that in the last 10 years. I mean, like you guys know, Jeff is insanely good at oral. He's insanely good at it. And I'm really good at reciprocating. So like when you get a partnership where you're both good at it, that can be a beautiful thing. That is truly lovemaking. It shouldn't be embarrassing. It shouldn't be weird. It shouldn't be like, ooh, I'm uncomfortable with this conversation. It's a beautiful thing. And for some reason, somewhere out there, they made it sound like it was not a good thing. It's not, it's not. And it is, it is. If you're not using a person and harming a person and it's between two people that love each other, 
I don't know why that's weird or uncomfortable. Kiwi girl, you had to train your husband. That's all right. Sometimes they need a little training. Donna Marie, bless your husband. He goes crazy when you run your fingernails up and down. Interesting. Like the shaft. You know, I recently found something about Jeff recently in like the last year. When I'm doing that, uh, like kind of a little, uh, a little ball action, like tickling a little bit, like just kind of with your fingers, but not fingernails. I just kind of, I noticed it. He's never said anything about it, but I noticed it um, because he started making way more noise. And so I just, I just kept doing it. So like, if you got a good partner that's in tune, I feel like not everybody does this. Um, Jamie, I'll answer you in a minute. I noticed it. I did it one day by accident and he was like making more noise. Now this was a while ago, but still I'm just saying it was, it was one of those things. Yeah. Tickling. It was just one of those things. He, he, I could tell he was more into it. And then I did it like three or four more times. And he finally mentioned it and he was like, Whoa, he was like, I like when you do that. And I was like, I noticed. So I kept doing it. Like it's all being in tune with your partner. And I think that's really a good thing. I think it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, Joel. Um, head can be better than sex for sure. Yarn prepper. I want a woman to tell me what she likes. Both people need to talk and be honest and make it enjoyable. And, and what yarn prepper just said, it's just, you know what I love about all of it. It's not even the orgasm. I love to have, I love to climax guys. Who doesn't right? It's the intimacy for me. It's the, like, it puts a smile on my face that like, I can be this close to another human being connection wise, like mind, but also body, just like closeness. That's why I could never, um, I did it in my early, early twenties. I use sex for validation, but now if I'm still with Jeff, if I'm not still with Jeff, if I'm ever single, I could never go F a bunch of different guys. I can't go have one night stands because it's all about the connection for me. I connect with you on a deep level. So there's no way I could just not know your last name, or I could be a sex worker. There's no way I could do it. Jeff even told me that once. He goes, you couldn't do it. It would break you. It would break you. He goes, I just know you. It would break your mind because I want to have that connection. I don't want you to go away once I do it. Um, you like this shirt. Okay, I bought this shirt in Kansas City recently. Um, it's huge. This is a small and it's huge, but it's a button down and I like it a lot. And I was going to ask you guys, I'm going to send it to Abby and see if she can order it for the store. Would you guys want me to find out about that? Yeah, you have to explore. Bye, Kuala Lu. Yeah, it's about the intimacy and connection for me. Big Z. Sex without connection is something I've never experienced. I'm thankful for that. Yeah. Yes, John, you're not a casual sex person. Not at all. It's not even fun for me. I can get myself off. So if it's about having an orgasm, I don't need a man for that. I can do that. I need the man for the connection. I want the man to be, it makes me think of that sex in the city where, where Carrie says, I miss the weight of a man on top of me even. Like just, it's the, it's for me, I'm a cancer sign through and through. I don't need the orgasm. I don't even have to get off. Like, it's just the love. It's the connection. It's, it's that whole sultry togetherness, Shelly. Yeah. So, um, not about getting off. I can take care of that if I need to. Um, interesting Shelly. I know Laura Dupree. And I love that. I love you and John together. John is such a good guy. Okay. You guys like this shirt. Okay. Thank you, Retired Red. Yeah, Sassy Savage. That's what I read last night. Um, Philip Wright, that would be cute. It's the whole package. Guys, I want to read that one part again that I read last night. Do you guys care? Because it was so good. It's not very long, but I love this. Love this, love this so much. Yeah, it's about the cuddling, the snuggling, the talking after, the talking before. Yeah, Shelly, I like that you could give a class on that. 
Okay, Jamie Palmer, I'll see if she can order it. I, there's a Lady Co. live tomorrow. Yes, are you sure? Exactly. The skin contact. Thank you, Lori Hilker. I love this so much. The slower you go, the more aroused she becomes. The feminine is aroused by love, not lust. Remember, lust is fast. Love is slow. Thus, the slower you go, the more aroused the feminine becomes. The masculine's arousal system is fast, external and visual. Thus, he's ready to go at the drop of a dime. Yet he must exercise patience in order to synchronize with the woman's slower internal emotional arousal system. Thus, a man that loves you will take his time with you. He prioritizes your pleasure, which takes longer than his. He delays his orgasm for as long as possible to allow you to reach your peak multiple times first. I love this next one real quick. This was amazing. He wants you completely satisfied. He's not having sex with you to dump his traumas and stresses into you. He's not trying to simply satisfy his ego and use your body for his own gratification. I love that. I No, I don't think it was Dr. Ruth. I saw it on a Facebook quote. And I was like, I love that. I absolutely think that's so beautiful. That is truly lovemaking. Like that the guy is in tune with her and you're both kind of synchronizing. Yeah, anybody can get off. We can all take care of ourselves. But that, hey, Alana, I love you. Um, yeah, it's the fun part. That's the fun part. That's the fun part of a relationship. So when people say like sex isn't everything, of course it's not everything, but to me, it's a big part of it because it's a huge piece of communication. It's a form of communicating. And I think it's beautiful when you can get your partner off, when you get your partner to a point where they're just like explosive and, um, it's that's it is a beautiful quote, and that's why I love it. Turns me on to get my partner off. I get super turned on by it because I love that person. You know, it's 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 a good thing. Um, oh, thank you, little mink. Yeah, it's a tough week, just a week of loss. But thank you for saying that. Touch and intimacy is so powerful. Yeah. Hey, Christy Kress, love you, girl. Oh, for sure, Kiwi. Yeah, you said it right there. That closeness can be almost spiritual as well. I love that. It is. That's what I mean. I can take care of myself. That's not what I want the man for. I want him for the intimacy, the closeness, the connection, that we're each other's best, closest friends. Like nobody else. That's kind of sexy too in and of itself. Nobody else is experiencing this with you. Just me. Nobody else gets to experience this, just you and me. I think that's so sexy and it's such a turn on. I like that, Jenny. I like that. Yeah. So anyway, guys, I didn't mean to go into this whole talk. I hope it doesn't offend people. I hope it doesn't make people uncomfortable. Um, but uh, yeah, Shelly. Shelly, I like how in tune you are with your partner. That's cool. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Um, I just, uh, I hope this didn't upset anyone guys. I, I enjoy talking about this stuff, but I definitely don't. Anna banana. Thank you. Um, I know Catherine, but I want to make this a safe space for everybody. So it's not something where I want to go. If you don't like it, leave. Like that's not, that's not the point of this channel. I don't want to do that. I will say kindly, if this triggers you or upsets you, or it's not your cup of tea today, tune out, tune back in tomorrow. We won't talk about the same thing tomorrow. Um, but I don't want to be insensitive and say like, get out then, you know, I will say get out then if you hate me and you don't want to be here, but, um, I just want to make this a safe space for everybody. Yeah. I like that. Katie did it. Totally Shelly. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a good discussion to have. I enjoy it, but I don't want to make people feel uncomfortable. That's the last thing I want to do for sure. So I hope I didn't. If I did, I apologize to you. I do. Cause I, it's not the purpose of talking about this stuff. I just think it's interesting. And I think there are quite a few people that enjoy talking about it. I really enjoy talking about it with Tommy because he's just so open, just like I am. And I think that's a beautiful thing. I really do. I admire that.
I love that. It's almost like a secret two people have. And I love a secret. It is. It's it's like a personal, yeah, it's like a secret between two people. Um, I know, Donna Marie, I agree. Alex says intimacy, intimacy is more important than sex. Comfort and security are more important than sex. But having all of it is the most amazing. Feeling in the world. You said it really well. Yes. Okay, Phoenix Rising. Um, I agree, Shelly, but not everybody likes being uncomfortable. And I certainly don't ever want to make somebody uncomfortable intentionally. Um, I will see about this blouse. Just remember, guys, I don't know if she can get it. I'll ask her. I will tell you I paid full price for it. And I'm guessing she would price it around the same. I think I paid $65 for it, which I didn't think was a bad price. It honestly looks like something from anthropology. Like, I just think it's really, it's kind of um, classy, very classy looking. Um, but this is a small and it's huge. It's huge. So it does run large. Um, John Van Geese, I get that. So I will ask Abby tomorrow, um, tomorrow morning at 10 AM, my time central, uh, it'll be a lady co live. I know Anna banana. I didn't think it was uh, super. Yeah. Thanks Kathy. Ann. I didn't think it was really expensive. And I have to say, I'm not a person that wears a ton of busy, busy prints. I'm not into like busy, busy. And this is a busy one, but there's something about, um, I don't know. There was just something about it. I really didn't care that it was busy. It went together well. Reese, um, I love that, Shelly. Hey, Don Laurie, when you can get look at your partner and across a crowded room and give a little grin, no words are needed. That's connection. Shelly, that's beautiful. I love that. And it's true. And sadly, not all relationships can do that. Not everybody can do that because the sex isn't always there. Thank you, Christy Cress. Thanks, Witness. I agree. Yeah. Um, can you mention at the Lady Co stream how Canadians can buy? I really want to buy, but I can't do it through the website. Uh, yes, it's through, I think, a third party company called Shippy. Does anybody know? There's like some company where you can buy the stuff and then they will ship it for you out of the country. I think it's called Shippy. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Kathy Ann. Oh yeah. Check your subscription, please. Um, again, I'm being unsubscribed from you guys like crazy. If you want to be unsubscribed, that's a different thing. If you want to be absolutely stay unsubscribed, but if you don't check your subscription, it's driving me nuts. I've never seen this before. People are being unsubscribed in droves. I'm almost unsubscribed. The number I've lost almost now is 200, like in the last week and a half. I mean, I'm not freaking out about it. I'm still getting all the views, but um, I think people are really getting unsubscribed. Jenny, yes, you are lucky to have that. Jamie Palmer, I like loose clothing too. Yeah, I don't mind that this is loose at all. And it's a beautiful top. I hope to have it for years. It's, it's again, it's very classic. Um, I think it'd be cute with a little jean jacket. It's just really cute. And it's something you could dress up or down, I feel. You can definitely, like, I don't wear white jeans or white pants, but I think in the spring or summer, this would be really cute with a pair of white pants. Um, thank you, Jersey girl. Shelly, I love you. You really brought it to the table today. So did you, John Van Geest. I don't get it either. It's a possibility YouTube put your channel in an age bracket and caused an unsub glitch. And that's okay. I mean... It bums me out a little bit that that many people got unsubscribed, but you know, it's okay. Let me ask you real quick before I go, would anybody want to see a relate about episode tonight? I don't want to overdo that. I don't know why I keep saying that. Um, I want to make sure first and foremost, Tommy wants to do it. I would never ask him to do a show. I kind of leave that up to him anyway, but if he's up for it, I just don't want to overdo it. Do you guys feel like we're doing too much? I don't know why I say that. I'm getting nothing but amazing feedback from you guys, but, um, okay. I just also think, why am I even asking the people who want to come are just going to come? Who cares? Like, uh, well, tomorrow we'll definitely do one, Catherine. So Either way, you can catch it. Okay, yes, everybody's saying yes. So
I will wait to hear from Tommy. I think he's at an appointment right now, but I want to find out. Um, no, Sassy Savage, I don't feel it's too much at all. Um, I just have to keep up on my channel because I, I don't want to let my channel fall by the wayside because we're doing the related boat, but I'm doing fine balancing it for sure. Um, we don't have ASIN usual times yet. We seem to be doing it more in the evening, but honestly, I'd like to flip flop that. I'd like to go back and do an evening for me. Um, okay. He's, he's responding. So I don't know yet. Um, I just, I, I would like to switch it up daily. Like I would like to do a relatable in the evening, relatable Reese in the afternoon, and then switch it up the next day and do me in the evening, relate about in the afternoon. I just, I kind of want to try to mix and match on that. Um, okay. And guys go over and subscribe to that. Okay. He said, yes. So I would say what time is lady co tomorrow? 10 o'clock in the morning, Karen Hall. And that is central time. Oh, Jenny. Every episode you do with Tommy, I absolutely love you two complete each other so well. Thank you for saying that. It means a lot for you to say that. I am trying very hard to be Tommy's friend right now. He needs me. He's, that's not to scare anybody. He's not going through anything other than what he said last week. He's taking a step back. He's helping his mental health. And I just want to be there for him in any capacity he needs me. Now, I am going to Phoenix next Friday. We're going to do a meet and greet with Tommy um, at a restaurant next Friday. And I will announce more of the details because I don't know the address of the place yet. It's going to be a lunch. Okay. Chaotic bleach. We'll try to do a relate about in the afternoon. Maybe we can do a relate about tomorrow afternoon. Cause I'll be at uh, lady co in the morning. I probably won't do another live on my channel tomorrow after lady co and then I'll do a relate about tomorrow and then back at it Friday on my channel. Um, and then guys, next week I will be gone uh, to Phoenix. So I don't know how much I'm going to be streaming while I'm gone. It's just kind of an up in the air thing. Whenever I travel, I never know. And I still want to get a damn iPad to travel with to make it easier so I don't have to carry this computer. It's really heavy. Interesting, Blake. Okay. Hold on, I gotta think for a minute, guys. I'm trying to think of a time with Tommy. Give me one second. Uh, no, I won't be protesting in Arizona. Hold on. Hold on. I'm trying to get an answer from him. Yeah. I was thinking like 7 PM my time tonight. I can't do it any earlier than that. Yeah. Tommy, uh, if you're watching, I am so excited to meet you next Friday, babe. Oh my God. I love that you're going to be there. Okay, guys, so okay. it'll probably be around. I don't think I can make it quite by 7. I'm not going to be home until about 7 o'clock tonight. Um, so can you guys do like a 7.15 central tonight? That would be 5.15 Tommy's time. He's, he's um, what is he, Pacific time? Phoenix rising. I'm so glad. Can you guys make it around 7.15 and I will rush my ass home? You know what I can do? L last night when we started, Tommy was 30 minutes late. So I just started the show. Why don't we do that? We can even set it for seven and I will hop on when I get here. It may be more like 7.15, 7.20 for me. How's that sound? Is that good? Pretty sure Tommy can run the show. Okay, let's do that. Um, all right. So um, we're good. Thank you for being here. 
Thank you for all the people who super chatted. Uh, nice, Anna Banana. Okay. And all the people who uh, gifted memberships and sent me your wisdom. I love you guys so much. Thank you for being here for uh, my sadness that I experienced a little bit today. Don't expect that to go away. Uh, we're coming up on the death date for Fred, and I think that's going to be tough for me. Um, so, okay, perfect. Tommy says he's in. Um, I will see you guys in a few hours then. I really love you guys. Thank you for hanging out with me. Heather, love you, girl. Um, and uh, for those that are not subscribed, check your subscription on my channel, please, if you don't mind. And then go over and subscribe to the Relate About. And uh, I'm sorry you lost your Yorkie. Very sorry. Makes me sad for you. Asen, that is such a nice thing to say. Thank you for providing us a nice change from all the ugly. You're very welcome. I don't do ugly. I don't like to, except for my vagina. It looks like Clint Eastwood in Gran Torino. And it has a bad attitude, just like that character. Love you, uh, Alex. Love you very much. All right, guys, I'm going to hop off. What time is it? Okay. I'm going to hop off and I will be back around seven-ish. But if I'm not back, Tommy will run the show. And I have every bit of faith in that man. I love you all. And I will uh, see you shortly. Here comes Fred. And he sure is cute.